Children will be you know, brought in here, again, screened, intaked. As more migrant girls seeking asylum are brought to the convention center, San Diego's mayor gives us an inside look at what life is like for them. The need for volunteers at San Diego's vaccination sites is growing. Why you don't need a medical background to take part. And the profits are already rolling in for gas lamp businesses after just one Padres home game with fans. ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. This week, San Diego became the first city in the state to offer an emergency intake site to temporarily house migrant children seeking asylum here in the U.S. Good evening. I'm Steve Atkinson. And I'm Kimberly Hunt. The San Diego Convention Center, which will house up to 1,400 teenagers at a time, is also the first location specifically for girls. I met Mayor Todd Gloria for an exclusive interview at the convention center on Saturday, just hours before the first arrivals to go in depth on where it all starts for these girls. He explained why he believes the decision is the right thing to do. And this is literally registration where right. they go into the system. Right, so come in through these big double doors. We'll have some buses. Um, children will be you know, brought in here, again, screened, intaked. Buses with teenage girls between 13 and 17 years old coming from overcrowded border facilities in Arizona and Texas, meant to hold 250 people, now bursting with an estimated 4,000. Get them showered, get them fed, get them in a bed. They're going to be exhausted. Right? But before a shower, dinner and bed, the girls will be COVID tested and given medical attention. The average stay in this facility is expected to be about a month. Intake here. As we sit down, Gloria points out these are not just children, but children who have endured traumatic circumstances on their journey to our southern border, most of them from Central America. You can imagine what has occurred to them. And so what we have to have is not just health care, a nurse or a clinic, but really trauma-informed specialists who can help them with whatever they're dealing with, if it's mental or physical violence, sexual violence. We're concerned that all of that will be present here, and we want to have professionals that can meet every one of those needs of these children. This is a multi-level undertaking, which includes Border Patrol, Federal Security, Health and Human Services, FEMA, the state, County Public Health, UCSD Health, Rady Children's, SBCS, and other nonprofits, as well as the city. We should provide them in this setting where they can have showers, hot meals, health care, education, religious services, legal services, all of that being provided under this roof. Paid for by the federal government, AP reports the estimated cost to be over $23,000 per month per child. Gloria staggered the arrivals for the best chance of everything running smoothly. I'm a perfectionist, Kimberly. I want this to run well, and I want this to be really an example of what a community can do that when they come together to take care for vulnerable children who don't have their parents. He's keenly aware of the criticism from those saying San Diego's homeless were moved out of the convention center the day before he announced the migrant girls would be coming in. Departure of homeless individuals from this center has nothing to do with the, uh, with the unaccompanied minors who are coming here. We have planned for that for months now. He says the plans included placing the remaining homeless individuals into shelters until we can create the housing and services to solve the issue long term. And he's looking at money from the government's rescue plan and the state to help that happen. But right now, he says the problem is made worse by the pandemic. I hear San Diegans frustration. I'm frustrated. I'm not happy with the status quo. We're working to change it. One of the best ways we can change the status quo on homelessness is to defeat COVID-19. Doing so, he says, will get our energy and money back onto other issues and allow us to get our shelters back up to capacity. All important issues, all issues he believes we can solve if we come together. I'll be back here over and over again to make sure that we hold our federal partners accountable. I'm not looking for any chain link fences. There's no tinfoil blankets. This is to be a home for our children for the next foreseeable uh, weeks and months. The contract with the federal government to house the migrant girls runs through mid-July. Conventions are scheduled here in August, and the mayor stresses we need them to happen to get more San Diegans back to work and revive our economy. If COVID continues to stall conventions, Gloria left open the possibility the space could stay a migrant shelter a little longer. We will do something here that makes San Diegans proud of what we can do, knowing that at their core, we are decent, honorable people who want to do right by children. This is what this effort, this initiative is intended to do. 
There are currently more than 17,600 unaccompanied migrant children in the care of the U.S. government. And many Republicans have been very vocal about opposing the convention center's use as a shelter for migrant children. Conservative radio host Carl DeMaio told ABC 10 News San Diegans shouldn't be asked to shoulder the burden of what he calls a failed Biden border policy. Uh, Joe Biden bears the uh, responsibility and should be held accountable for any injuries or deaths that are occurring uh, in this uh, very uh, dangerous and, and, and toxic uh, uh, industry of human smuggling. That's what this is. Uh, what Todd Gloria also has done uh, is been a slap in the face to uh, uh, taxpayers and citizens here in San Diego. Todd Gloria chose to kick homeless out of the convention center in order to make room for illegal immigrant migrants. DeMaio says he doesn't believe the city had previous plans to end the homeless shelter at the convention center, as the mayor has stated. Now, we have put the whole interview with DeMaio on 10news.com. You're going to find it on the homepage with Kimberly Story. Flags at the White House are at half staff tonight for the police officer killed today outside the U.S. Capitol building. A driver rammed a car into two officers at a barricade, killing one officer, Billy Evans, an 18 year veteran of the force. The driver then got out and reportedly lunged at officers with a knife before being shot and killed. This has been an extremely difficult time for U.S. Capitol Police after the events of January 6th and now the events that have occurred here today. Law enforcement sources identified the attacker as 25 year old Noah Green. The extent of the injuries to the second officer are not clear, but President Biden said he was told that officer is fighting for his life. Turning now to coronavirus and another big step today in the attempt to reopen California. The state announced indoor concerts Theater performances and other private gatherings will be allowed starting April 15th. To attend, people have to either be tested or prove they are fully vaccinated. The number of people who can attend will depend on what tier their county is in. Under our current red tier, venues up to 1,500 people are limited to 10% capacity. Larger venues can go up to 20%. Private events, including receptions and conferences, they are limited to 100 people indoors if they're all tested or vaccinated. Outdoor gatherings can have up to 200. All San Diegans 50 and up, they are now eligible for the COVID vaccine. With the number of people able to get the vaccine quickly growing, the number for volunteers that need is just as significant. Our ABC 10 News reporter Leah Pazzetti shows us these vaccine sites really rely heavily on volunteers. It almost feels like a party inside Sharp Healthcare's South Bay vaccine site. This group cheering on freshly vaccinated people are volunteers. It's good to be part of the community and part to give back. Lorena Monzon has already done more than 50 shifts since this site opened in January. She says she's seen the fluctuation in volunteers. Sometimes, you know, you see a lot of volunteers and then some days it's low. So we always need volunteers. Um, especially with the numbers coming up, the availability of that vaccine growing. It's definitely, you know, I, I think I think the volunteers are always needed. This is something Sharp is bracing for. As supply grows and eligibility expands, the need for volunteers will be just as important. It's not just the tiers opening. We also know the weather's warming up, the city's opening up. Um, you know, volunteering here may not be the flashiest thing to be able to do, but uh, we're hoping that the community will continue to respond in such a positive way uh, to help their own community out um, alongside us. Myron Soyanko manages this site and says about 85% of their staff on a given day are volunteers, meaning they're crucial. It's a very huge portion and we really can't run the clinic without our volunteers. Any person who volunteers for three shifts at a sharp site becomes eligible for the vaccine. And he says many people jumped on that chance when the tiers were limited. But now that more are eligible, people might lose interest in volunteering, even though the need is still there. He says many do return for more shifts after seeing how fun volunteering can be asking others to now consider taking the time to make a difference. We're part of this moment in history in a way that positively affected our community. Leah Pizzetti, ABC 10 News. They make getting a shot fun.
Anyone can volunteer at sharp vaccination sites. People with no medical background are needed for checking people in and directing people to different stops. A big one day jump in case numbers. The county reported just under 500 new COVID cases today, while our test positivity rate ticked up to 3%. Another 13 people have lost their lives to coronavirus, bringing that total now to above 3,500. Easter might look closer to normal for some faithful San Diegans this year. Most services are still expected to be held virtually on Sunday, but some will be held in person. South Bay Pentecostal Church in Chula Vista will have its congregation indoors. This comes after the church's major victory in the Supreme Court in February, allowing churches to resume in-person services. This is gonna be one of the greatest Easter worship experiences in the history of the church, no doubt, because so many people have been kept from their church for so long. Under the red tier, churches are only allowed to have 25% capacity. Distancing and facial coverings are also required. Stay on top of any new developments with coronavirus by downloading the 10 News app. A free version is available in the App Store. Police suspect that drunk driving was to blame for a wild scene on several local highways in the East County. Police say the driver of a pickup truck was playing, quote, bumper cars with other cars last night. They say the truck hit at least four cars on State Route 125 and the westbound 94. Police started chasing him, and that ended when the driver crashed into two more parked cars. Following a short standoff, the driver, 56 year old David Archer, was tased and arrested by officers before being taken to the hospital. Fortunately, no one else was seriously hurt.